Mike Tyson is sports most notorious figure, boxer, rapist, ex-champion, ex-con, a hero to some, a villain to many. But is he really crazy? Or does he just know the value of his image? Is he the same person outside the ring as he appears inside? In short, is he Mike or is he Tyson? Mike Tyson was just 20 when he won sports richest prize, the heavyweight championship of the world, but his fearsome brutality hinted at a darker side. He lost his title four years later and was convicted of rape. He served three years and maintained his innocence. Since then, he has won and lost the title again. He was banned for biting an opponent and he returned to prison for a road rage incident. He has his fans, he has his critics, he has his rivals. Everyone has an opinion. Mike Tyson continues to fight, he continues to make money, he continues to spend money. He is the main attraction. Mike Tyson is sports answer to serial killers. I mean, it's not that Vino what he does, but it keeps him on the front page, and there's that voyeur fascination. Mike's a wonderful guy. He's not what the media paints him to be. Bad news sells, I guess. Eventually he's named, people expect something unusual to happen. He is and does attract uh, controversy. The reason he is Mike Tyson is because of the press. The reason he's had such a fantastic career in boxing is because of the press. Whether you, whether you know, whether he, they've written good things or bad things about him, the fact they've written about him means that the general public know who he is. Um, I think Mike Tyson, you know, he's had a lot of problems in the past. Some self-inflicted, some that caused by other people, um, ups and downs. But he's a lucky man. He has the ability to go and earn money. You know, he's not like a, a Tim Witherspoon, you know, another heavyweight champion, or you know, Sonny Liston at the end of his career, and other type, you know, other boxers where where you know th the juice run out. This guy, because of the press, because of the controversy that surrounds him can make huge sums of money for himself and people who are involved with him. My heart just pleads for Mike because he, he, he thinks nobody loves him, not even his own people, and we do. But the last time he gave an interview with Showtime, tears came down his eyes. He said, nobody cares, not even my own people. And afterwards, I went over and grabbed him by the shoulders and shook him and said, Michael, we do care. Tyson is perfect fodder for a tabloid world. And when he fights, people go to see the, the perversity of boxing. Not its beauty, not its balleticness, the brutality and the perversiveness, and it's Mike Tyson. Check it out. Yeah. The media has always portrayed Tyson as a monster. It's as simple as that. Tyson has always attacked back and a relationship of excess has developed. Tyson and the media need each other. Tyson and the media will continue to use each other. It's just something about Tyson. Is it the bad boy image? It, it's a very similar thing to the pop world in the early 60s, um, when Mick Jagger came on the scene, when we had all these nice, clean singers like um, Cilla Black, um, Cliff Richards. Then all of a sudden you get this bad guy popping um, drugs down his mouth, sleeping with the same sex. You know, it's great. It's anti the establishment. and. They love it, don't they? It just gives them something to write about. It's a relationship that's turned more sour over time, I think, and it's become really very harsh in the last uh, year or so, ever since the Holyfield uh, ear-biting incident. I think, you know, now there's a lot of this white boy stuff going back and forth with certain guys questioning them. Uh, I think it's, it's really turned things very ugly and I think hurt him more than, than anybody else because this face now goes out to the public and they're, they're very tired of it. They're tired of the harshness, they're tired of the racist angle of a lot of it. Uh, and, and you can see it in his pay-per-view numbers, which are dropping. Don't forget, these are the same people who 
10 or 12 years ago said, oh my God, this Mike Tyson, what's, this is the greatest thing that boxing ever happened for boxing. This is this, and they were all Mike Tyson men. But you know, look, that's the way the world is. They will turn against you in a heartbeat. Well, I seen Mike would take time out of his busy day and sit down with a reporter and he would have, give his side of it. But then the reporter would write it different. He would be misquoted. They would take what he said out of context. You know, it's not fair to Mike Tyson. Uh, Mike, as I said, is a good guy. Uh, some reporters like him, some doesn't. But the ones that doesn't like him, he doesn't care. He doesn't have to prove anything to those guys. Mike uh, definitely is, uh, is, has been that type of athlete that nothing ever escapes scrutiny with him. So he could be at a restaurant and, and ask not to have the lettuce and tomato on his sandwich and someone would make something big about it, okay? Oh, that was an insult to me that he wouldn't have tomatoes. They were growing in my mom's backyard and he insulted my mom and da da da. So, you know, with Mike, you know, criticism comes with his every breath. Of my brothers and Tyson's clever, he's played the system well. Um, you know, you couldn't stage manage what Tyson's done. Um, he's worked the system even to now, you know, they're not really against him, but he'll, he'll go to a press conference and he'll, he'll pick out a white journalist and, and have a go at him saying about the trash he's writing about Tyson. He loves it because if they didn't do it, Tyson would just be an ordinary fighter now, wouldn't he? I mean, you know, the only thing about Tyson is his notoriety now, it's not his fighting ability. If he goes back to his old sort of neighborhoods that, that he grew up in where things are very harsh, uh, people still look at him as sort of a, a hero and, and in an odd way a sort of symbol of all the unfair things that have ever been done to them and their neighbor and their uncle down the street. Uh, they look at Tyson and everything is, is uh, a, an attack on Mike Tyson because he's been successful when in fact, you know, he's consuming himself. He attacks himself most of the time. People are never what they appear to be. Don't care who they are, royalty or what. No one's ever what they appear to be. We know, no one knows anybody. They don't know um, Prince Philip. They don't know Mike Tyson. They don't know the bum in the street. No one knows anybody truly what they truly are. No, most most writers, in my opinion, are dysfunction derelicts. You know what I mean? Who want to talk about fighting? Let's see what they did. Who did they screw ever? Who did they actually fornicate with or whatever? Are they homosexuals? What are they? Who are judging them? They could throw everything they want at me because I'm a man. I could take anything. I've been at the bottom. I've been as low as any man could ever be. And if you think if this is going to break me up, a bunch of little um, pissy wannabe um, um, poly white retard for. Um, Photographers or writers could break my spirit. Never. I've been there. I'm not saying I've been in jail. I'm a hardcore. No, because there's a bunch of homosexuals, a bunch of fags, a bunch of weak people in jail. And the reason why people go to jail because they don't have their shit in check and they're not, um, they can't manage their life. So that don't mean you're a bad guy because you're in jail. It means you're pretty, pretty much a dysfunctional, weak individual and can't manage your life outside in the world. So that doesn't mean you're a tough guy. It's easy for somebody to shank somebody or beat up people over 10 or 12 guys or something. But I'm talking about man for man, bravo for bravo. I can stand up with any man. Red blood, blue blood, whoever they are. What's your name? Huh? Yeah, Andy? Mind you, Jeremy, yeah. A lot, a lot of guys, for some reason, want to... You're, you're a glutton for pain, I tell you that. You said it took nine hours. Man, this took my mother 12 hours. Let me see it again, Andy. You know you're cycling. You're definitely a nut. There's no doubt about it, but it's okay. I ain't good. A and D Y, right? A and D Y, right? Andy, all right, got it right. Thank you, Andy. Thank you very much. Andy, you come to the fight? You got tickets? No. Yes. All right, we need to get this guy tickets. All right, give him some information. Give this guy tickets. Is it good likeness, Mike? Uh -huh. Oh, that's who I am. Yeah, he did a good job. Fred. Fred, you gonna come right with me? Come on, you're with you on television, brother. Talk yeah. to him, baby. Yes. The main, the main man. The main man. The main man. <laughs> the main man. I'm he's, nobody. He's, the main he's, man. He's better than Holyfield. I'm the main right. man. I'm I met Holyfield, he's the best. Oh yeah. yeah. You gotta take care, you gotta be good in school. Don't be that shit. Yes. Mike. Well I know he does get harsh treatment from the media. He really does and that pretty much have him where he don't give a, you know, he just get, get the attitude where he don't really care about it anymore because he feel like none, nobody else has nothing that they can else do to him. 
I think he's got a really bad image, but he doesn't help himself. He comes across as a bit of an animal, and I think he kind of revels in that public image in some respects. I like him. He just speaks his mind, like everybody else should. You know, instead of holding it back, he'd give you what he had to give you. I'm sure there's another side, but nobody ever sees it. <laughs> they all see the one that the press puts out. So, but you know, it's it's well deserved. You have to look at it from a different point of view. Uh, a lot of people has done time in jail. Jail is supposed to be a place where you can be rehabilitated, and you're supposed to have a second chance. I mean, if you don't give him a second chance, then there's, there's no hope for the rest of the people who are incarcerated. I think yes, you just forget about the past and think about the future now, because he had a lot of problem with the press and all sort of stuff like that. So. He has to move on. He can't let the past hold him back. of it, Tyson is always news. When he visits, the crowds arrive. He is the attraction everywhere he goes. The response on the streets is fanatical, especially in black neighborhoods. Here in Brixton, in London, he attracted bigger crowds than Muhammad Ali and Nelson Mandela, two of Tyson's heroes. He walks with his fans, he talks their talk, they love him. Tyson is something what you would call uh, like like Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, from the black standpoint, is a guy who brought blacks into the White House. Who, uh, if you look at 
uh, the history of the White House, uh, there's never been the participation of blacks coming through the White House. So blacks view him as a savior, like as in the days of John Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy. And so same thing with Tyson. They look at Tyson as a guy who came from where they coming from. And they understand Tyson a lot more than corporate America or cor the corporate world understands Tyson. They love him. They, they, they know he's a rebel. They know that uh, he's not an Uncle Tom. Uh, the black people are with him. The kids are with him. He walks through the ghetto. He's praised, and you know he, he's a he's a, 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 a vigilante. Tyson can go anywhere, and people look at him as an attraction. You know, Lennox can go anywhere, and people look at me with respect. Mike was thrown on the streets when he was seven years old. Look how far he's come. Tyson still uh, has a certain esteem within the black community and within the African-American community here because he always, no matter what, displays a certain sense of strength. Uh, black folks have felt discriminated against, they felt disenfranchised, and when a, when, a, when a black man stands up and shows strength and defiance of a system that has discriminated against a, a, a whole race of people, then there's a certain amount of respect that is fostered there. It's in the most deprived areas like Moss Side in the north of England that Tyson has the most influence. There are hundreds of drug-related shootings here each year. It is the type of place Tyson escaped from. It is the type of place he gets respect. We cannot continue to demonise the very same icons that the young people relate to. There are young black males who believe that if Tyson is evil, they are evil. They will start to believe that spin. And that spin can have an adverse effect on the very social welfare reform policies that are now being prioritised into communities that were otherwise not reachable. People think, oh, he's a rapist or whatever, and the people that think, oh, he's a, he's a role model and all this. But basically, the people around there, uh, they've got respect for him, you know what I mean? I think it goes far as saying he's an hero. Everybody's got their own view on it. People say he was set up and what have you, you know. So the man's done his time, so leave him alone. You know, he's trying to get his life back together. I'm not too sure if he's such a role model, um, but he's, he's okay. I mean, he, he, he's struggling and he's um, earning a living, honest living. So you've got to give him credit in a way. At the end of the day, He's taking his art form, which is boxing, and taking it to another level. And because he's taking it to another level, that's why he gets respect, because he's proved himself to be the best in this, in this game. He's not a role model. And this is the other point, so he's a bad role model. He's a hero. When Tyson was in prison, convicted of rape, he converted to Islam. It's been hard for him, and he has his doubters. But being a Muslim has given Tyson a new platform. More fans and much more responsibility. And it's given the media another story. No cameras. No cameras. No cameras. No cameras. No cameras. No cameras. I'm Muslim and um, I fall short of the mark all the time, but just all praise to Allah that I try my best and he understands. He's been converted several times, he's been a Baptist, he's been a Catholic, and, you know, and now he's apparently a Muslim. And you know, you hate to 
to judge anybody's religious beliefs or what, how much they really believe, but uh, all I know is that when I was there on the morning he came out of prison uh, in Indianapolis, and the big question was when he, when he got in the limo, was his car going to turn to the right and go to Indianapolis to the airport, or was he going to turn to the left and go to the mosque where he was supposedly going to go to pray? Well, he did in fact turn left and go to the mosque and pray, but when he got out of the car at the mosque, right the person who jumped out after him was his future wife, uh, who had a leather miniskirt on cut up to her hips, you know, which was a complete insult to everything that the, that the Muslims believe, and they wouldn't let her in the, in, the, in the mosque. So right off the bat, I said to myself, either he doesn't get it, or this is something for him to hold on to, but it's another odd kind of circumstance, I think, in his life. Michael Tyson is a new in, uh, in, in Islam. Uh, for that, it is not easy for him. It will take time um, from him to be a proper Muslim, to, to learn everything about Islam. Uh, he, as a normal person, he can do mistakes, he can uh, go something wrong, as all of us. Uh, so he is starting a new life. Uh, because when you convert or when you move to any new religion, it means you're starting a new life, you change everything. Uh, because the religion is not only in your heart, but also it will be in your actions. When you go to the uh, new religion, you, you, you will change many things, many habits, many characters, many ideas, uh, uh, many things you will do. It's not easy to jump in one go uh, from that side to the other side. I want to be their brother. I want to be. I want to be able to embrace them. I don't want to be able to run from them. I don't want them to chase me. If I'm their brother, especially the Muslim brother, they can't cover me. You know what I mean? All praise be to Allah. Allah says something to the effect, don't cover your brother. Let him be free. Give me advice and let him disperse. Just be my brother. And see me shake my hand, discuss business or whatever with me, then just let us disperse and go our way. There's no need to glamour around me. I'm just their brother. We have no we have no superiors in Islam. We're all equal. Keep everybody together. We got we got massages, yeah? Yeah, but we need to um, go look at this car first. Well, why don't we do that? Go to Versace's first and do that on the way back to near the hotel. I'll get yeah. rid of these people. You don't understand. All right, go on, let's go. Yeah. Car first. I know Yo, you're you car first. Crack. You drug crack? Yeah, that's your car. Same as me, yeah. don't worry. You can't take like a me. crack addict and then say, let's go. All right. Let's go get some marijuana <laughs> and then we're going to come back and get the crack later. The fame and the fans have helped Tyson make in excess of $200 million. I go, let's pay for it and we'll come back tomorrow. And he spends it fast. Boxers and a lot of people who come from sort of very sort of uh, humble backgrounds and humble beginnings, that when they start earning huge sums of money, they obviously want to spend their money on things that maybe feel it gives them some status. I've been like that when I was younger. You know, you, you want to buy the, you want the big house, you want the, the Rolls Royce or the Bentley. And, you know, Tyson, amongst many other boxers, has done that. And, and you know, it's a hard game box. And you can't blame people for wanting, you know, the toys and the sweets that go with it. Try this. Goodbye. <laughs> No. Yeah. You got a bigger size, 58 or something? Let me check downstairs. Like, we have one. Would this color me? I'm not sure. Let me what color is that? Navy blue. Oh, I don't need blue. I need green. But try it. I need green. I, I think it's okay, no? Oh, you do? <laughs> you give me that in this size? I have not. <laughs> I would like, I have not. You want to try again this? For it the doesn't color? fit. It won't fit. Yeah, it's not my fault, it's your muscle. <laughs> it's <miserable. laughs> Don't try this, it's very nice. Uh, my, you don't like it. Come on, pack my stuff up. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> In Tyson's case, I think there's this sort of sense of buying friends, that this is the only way to keep these people around me. They, uh, I've seen him hand his credit card uh, to people and I watch him go berserk in a jewelry store in New York. I mean, there's this guy's taking watches by the handful and uh, the bill, as, as I recall, was over $40,000. When they were done, Tyson didn't buy a thing for himself. Well, there's so many stories about Mike Tyson, the way he spends money. But then, you know, you have to look at it this way. Where else could you earn the sort of money for the sort of work you do? I mean, you know, you're talking about 
a, a heavyweight title fight. You know, a champion can generate anything from six million up to ten million just to fight a nobody. Um, you know, then you get a mega fight, Holyfield and Tyson. I mean, the sort of money that generated like twenty five million plus. You know, they're talking about Lewis Tyson, talking about thirty million plus there for each fighter. You just you can't. For, that's really for eight weeks work. You know, you, so you get it, it's so easy to come by, they just go out and spend it unless they've got this sort of mentality which to invest and look after. Unfortunately for fighters, some of them don't have the mentality to look up, to think of about tomorrow, they only think about today. They get all this money in their pocket, boom, they run out and buy a million shirts, a few cars, a few gold wristwatches, pick up a few new girlfriends and buy a few houses. Then they realise they've got some taxes to pay and they've got serious problems. This looks good on me though, it doesn't look tight, right? How does it look on me? Shopping is one of his many weaknesses. He just spends, spends and spends. Houses, cars, diamonds, clothes. Too many, too much, too often. Wait, come on, I'm ready. Tyson's lifestyle is equivalent to any chief executive or any uh, multi-millionaire in what he can afford to do and what he can't afford to do. Tyson doesn't have to worry about paying the electricity bill or paying the milkman, you know, or uh, buying a new car. But I really don't know what he does with his money. <laughs> I hear, like everybody else hears, but I don't really know what he does with his money. And at the end of the day, what he does with his money is his own business. Because he makes it, and if he wants to spend it or throw it away, that's his business. These sapphires, each one has to be cut in. And each stone is cut exactly the same as the next one. So they just slip into each other. It's invisibly set. It's truly a work of art. How do you feel with those diamonds? I feel beautiful. Really? Yeah. yeah you look like great. Diamond. I'm truly impressed. 47 carats of beautiful diamonds. I've been all over the world and I've bought diamonds all over the world and I'm truly impressed here. I must say one thing, Mike's got a great knowledge of diamonds. He's not just uh, a boxing man. He's a man that seems to have studied diamonds in my opinion because each rare stone I've shown him, he's known about. I know a little bit about everything. I don't know a lot about anything. Yeah, but you know quite a bit about diamonds, Mike. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. let's, let's have a look, a look on the wrist. Fantastic. Nice, beautiful diamond and beautiful. beautiful black skin. Can you divulge the, the cost of this, Mike? Excuse me? Can you divulge the cost of this one? I only allow him to do this. Millions. 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 This, is, this is big money. This is big money. Top of the line. But more than the watch? Huh? More What's, than the watch. Oh, yes. This is top of the line stuff. This is big stones. Big stones. That's great. Wow. What a piece. What happens with Mike Tyson now with uh, money? I think he's, he reasonably spends a huge amount amounts of money on things that he certainly doesn't need. I think that's a low esteem thing. He buys that because it makes him feel good. He gets that shot in his arm. That's the most beautiful watch in the world. Graph watch, y'all. Lawrence Graph, y'all. That's right. It's a million dollar watch. He said that his sister died when she was fairly young. Uh, of some disease regarding uh, affected her weight. She was overweight and she died. And he said, I live for today, man. I want it now. I, want it. I don't want it tomorrow. I want it now. And that's what he lives for. He lives for today. Las Vegas since 1979, when they had the first fight in a casino, Larry Holmes, Ken Norton, has been a major player in boxing. Tyson has been, up to now, one of its attractions. But Tyson's last two fights here have been anything but satisfactory. There was a riot at one, which is not exactly what you want in the casino when you have your high rollers, chips on the floor and people grabbing them from the tables. And his last one was less than satisfactory where he hit a man after the bell. So they sort of said, don't let the door hit you on the ass on your way out. Tyson has survived controversy outside the ring but it's the scandals inside that have jeopardized his ability to earn the money he so likes to spend. The biggest scandal of all happened in Vegas against the then reigning heavyweight champion, Evander Holyfield. I thought uh, in the third round, the beginning of the third round, that Mike had his best round against Holyfield from either fight. He was really hitting him. And then all of a sudden, the ear biting started and we didn't know what happened. I was sitting maybe too close and I thought maybe that there was a, uh, a knee or something that he had kneed Holofield because Holofield started jumping up and down. I didn't know what happened. 
and uh, Mills Lane called us up and said he bit him and the doctor looked at his ear, we let it go again and then he did it again and, and the fight was over. Uh, the commission revoked his license um, for his career. How many times you wanted to get bit? Was a goddamn limit to everything, you know, including bites. I saw the fight, and until the, uh, what happened, it was it was a good fight, and I was horrified by it. And I think the American people are, and um, I don't know what the federal role should be. I've not given any thought to that, whatever. But I, as a as a fan, and I was. Uh, Horrified. And I'm glad that I would have an opportunity to talk to him. You know, I, I would like to explain that, you know, you you mess with people's lives. You know, it's some things you just came to say you're sorry for. Tyson tried nonetheless. Thank you for this opportunity. Saturday night was um, the worst night of my professional career as a boxer. And I'm here to apologize today. To ask the people to, ex to expect, to the people that expect more from Mike Tyson to forgive me for snapping in the ring. Um, in doing something that I've never done before and will never do again. I apologize to the world, to my family, and to the Nevada State Athletic Commission that has always treated me fairly. The infamous bite prompted endless hearings and hours and hours of boxing bureaucracy. There's a fine line between sports and chaos. And what happened on June 28th those events went beyond that line. This is a permanent revocation with an annual review, and unless this commission changes its mind, then that would be a lifetime revocation. Banned from Vegas, banned from boxing, and fined $3 million of his $30 million purse. Tyson sat on the sidelines for 18 months. He took on the suits, played their game, and eventually an appeal to get back his license to fight was successful. You want to see him? You're going to show him. Look up. His comeback fights have been colourful. He tried to break France Bota's arm. He knocked out all in noise with a punch after the bell. It continues to make him the most unpredictable show in town. And the truth is, it continues to make him box office. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. You want to see him? Check him out. See him and believe it. That's Mike Tyson, y'all. Man, listen, right? I don't know nothing about being a heavyweight champ. Only I know I know how to fight, right? I'm a nigga, right? You know, really, 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 really. I'm not saying like I'm a black person, you know, but I'm a, I'm a street person. I'm so, I don't even want to be a street person. I don't even like, I don't even like typical street people. Th th but that's just who I became and what happened in my life and the tragedies in life that made me that way. But, you know, I'm Mike. You know, I'm not malevolent or anything, I just am. And I just wanna just, just live my life. And uh, I know your guys talk bad about me and your guy a really bad snig about, there about me, but you gonna, I'm gonna make sure you talk about me. <clears throat> your grandkids and your kids after that are gonna know about me. Right. I'm gonna make sure of that. They're never gonna forget about me. Your great grandkids are gonna say, wow, wasn't that a bizarre individual? You know, when he first won the title, uh, uh, at that time he was a young guy, 20 years old, and it was much easier to get one-on-ones with him and so forth. And not long after he uh, beat Trevor Burbick, I had a one-on-one -on -one with him. And in the midst of it, out of the blue, we were talking about this, that, and he said to me, uh, he looked right at me and said, you know, I know I'm fucked up, man. And just like that, and I was quite taken aback in it. And I said, well, you've made a lot of money now, you know, you could probably go see somebody and, and, and you know, maybe solve some of these problems. I'll never forget it. He looked back at me and it was the first time I was convinced for sure how bright he really is underneath it all. And he said, yeah, but would I still be Tyson? And I think that's his fear. You know, if, if, I, if I get out of this life, will I still be Tyson? And uh, uh, the fact is, he, of course, he won't be Tyson. And uh, I've always felt that the happiest three and a half years of his life were when he was in prison in Indiana. No one bothered him after the first 90-day adjustment. Nobody bothered him for the most part. He came and go. His friends came to visit him. He had three hots and a cot. Uh, life was pretty good, and there was no pressure on him to do anything. And I, and I think that uh, in some sort of twisted way, that was the best time of his life. You don't know me. You know what I do. But you guys can't define me or define my work as a father. I'm many things, you know. I'm many things. Yeah, I'm a convicted rapist. I'm, 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 a, I'm a hell raiser. I'm a father, a loving father. 
I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a semi good husband. You know what I mean? What? You know what I mean? I'm just a man out here trying to enjoy my. I, I was born poor. I ain't never had nothing. Man. I don't know how to act. All right. But the real thing is, I'm just, I'm just here to be me. I don't care what uh, you think you know what? I am or who, or who anyone thinks I am um, at this stage of my life. But um, yeah, I'm a pretty much of a tyrant titan. Yeah, that's who I am. Tyson wants his place in history. Placing Madame Tussauds would be a start. Why are you, why are you getting in the way all the time, I got a call from Kasumata, and he said, Gene Kilroy, lightning struck twice. You know he had Jose Torres, he had Floyd Patterson. Now, he said, lightning struck twice. I have a young kid here who's going to be the heavyweight champ of the world. He knows you. I said, he knows me, cuss. Put him on. And the voice came over the phone. Hey, man, this is Mike Tyson. You came to my reform school. He said, I want to be the biggest thief. But when I seen Ali, I said, no, man, I want to be a champ someday. <laughs> oh, these are all our guys. <laughs> He does like to talk about boxing history, and when I talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, uh, he has talked to me about Sonny Liston before, and, um, and it, it, he's an interesting man. I, I, I enjoy talking to him because he knows the sport, and, and um, there's something about him that, uh, that I, I find very interesting. Yeah. You Thanks a lot. I like Nassau. I hope he's not a racist. I like I wish I could have met them. We had an at-risk program coming here at the gym, and uh, these are kids that they have problems at home and all different kinds. And he took them all and he showed them how to spar and how to hit that big bag of his. That's a favorite moment, and they just, they glowed. And these kids from that program, you wouldn't know they were the same ones that came here last March. That's the truth. He's awesome. <laughs> Mike is a good guy. There was a story out here, one of the fighters, an ex-fighter, was going through bad times and he was losing his home and Mike found out about it and he found out how much he was down, how many payments Joe wanted. So he said, Gene, I'm not going to worry about the payments. I'll just pay his house off. This is the type of guy Mike is. But he's not doing it for publicity. He doesn't need the publicity. Come on, get out of Get out of Mike wants his place in history. I think that uh, he's going to work to get the, the historical, for the people to look at him as, as a great champion, and I think that's what he's fighting for. Oh, I love Mike Tyson. He's the greatest fighter. As a boxer, I think he's great. As a person, I'm not too fond of him. He's human just like anybody else. So he's able to make mistakes and hope he can ask God for forgiveness, but you know, he's able to make mistakes like anybody else. Better people in the world, children to look up to than him. Well, I think after what he's done, he can't possibly be a role model for anyone. It's pretty, it's not unforgivable, but it's, it's very hard to kind of then use him as an example for other people. I think he's a little crazy, but you know, I think he's just being himself to the best of his ability. I think he's crazy. Maybe he has a good heart, yeah, but not, not he doesn't show it. He's, I don't know, he's, just, he's very confused, in my opinion. He's arrogant and he's crazy. He says mad things. Like, I don't know about eating people's kids or eating people's ears off, all that stuff. You know, Mike is Mike and if he kind of goes off a little and has a temper problem, well, that's probably what makes him a good fighter. I was looking forward to seeing him in Holyfield fight again, you know, but hopefully if he does, he'll eat lunch first. <laughs> I think my dad would beat him up. <laughs> I don't like him. Um, I think he's very vulgar as uh, a boxer or not. He gives a bad name for, uh, 
for any sports. Woods, uh, Jordan, all the rest of them, they had their clean cut. Nice guys. Nice backgrounds. But Tyson did have a pretty rough upbringing where they didn't. So I don't know if that plays into it or not, but I'm not too fond of his character. Over the years, some of the bad publicity, some of the things he's done has made him not as popular as he has been before in the past. In America, a lot of times as a celebrity, they have, we have a lot of expectations and high hopes and we forget that they are really just a human being. I think he's pretty much trying to be a true person. I think he really wants to grow and be something special. And um, I think he's trying to get more intelligent, but he's Mike, so and he gets hit in the head a lot. So. That's all he can be, is Mike. <laughs> I think on some levels he understands that he can't ever solve the, the sort of problems inside him and, uh, and all of that as long as he's in this world of boxing. Uh, but I don't think he can walk away from it just because, uh, number one, the money's too big and his identity is totally wrapped up in being Mike Tyson, the fighter. If you look at Tyson's whole career from the time he first emerged with Customato, Whoever the strongest person in the room was in terms of personality, that's who he became. Cuss, Jimmy Jacobs with the little hat, Don King, you know, Robin Givens, no matter who it is, you know, when he was in prison, it was the Muslims who were the most powerful group in most prisons. Uh, you know, and, and you know, he just has no concept of who he is. The only thing he knows is you know, when he's a fighter, uh, people will accept him uh, you know, and put up with almost anything. And I think that's why he can't walk away, although I think in his heart of hearts he'd love to. It's tough for a fighter to quit. They get you on the way down. They come up and they'll offer you. With, with a guy like Mike Tyson, they'll have a young, strong heavyweight coming up someday. They'll say, Mike, this is an easy fight for you. $20 million. They did the same to Joe Lewis, but it wasn't the bigger money then. Joe Lewis, $300, $300,000 to fight Rocky Marciano. Ali was retired. Come back, fight Larry Holmes, $8 million. Ali said $8 million. People who are dying would go in the ring and fight $8 million. For, but the money gets you. The money gets you. And I don't want to see this happen to Mike. I want to see him get his title back, raise his hand, and quit. That would be great. That would be, that would be my dream that I had for Muhammad Ali. And I'd like to see Mike Tyson do that. What I like is when, when he does have a knockout, he picks the other fighter up and hugs him and kisses him, and, 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 and that's all he should do. And, and, and that, I'm hoping that in, the, in the, uh, the waning years of his career that, that everything is natural and whatever happens, uh, he walks out of the ring with his head held high. Mike Tyson, in spite of what you may think about him, madman, crazy man, uh, convict, whatever you might think about him, he is an enormous draw. His marquee is tremendous. People are attracted to him. He is a magnet. And if he and Lewis ever face off, it is going to be the biggest bonanza in heavyweight history. If Tyson wants to test, remember Lennox Lewis is the best. If he wants to test, I'll put him to rest. End the story. I believe that Mike Tyson has uh, I'll fight Lennox Lewis. My Gut feeling is he's going to have to fight Lennox, and he will end up fighting Lennox, even though he won't have the confidence going into the fight. Tyson's never seen a boxer like me. He hasn't boxed to anybody to prepare for me. So, you know, he's just living off his name. To me, he's a has-been. He's plateaued off, and uh, we're going to have to see if we can get him in the ring because there's a whole heap of people out there that still believe in him, and we're going to have to see, uh, put that fight together because anywhere I go, people are always asking me, well, you know, when are you going to get Tyson? That's the next biggest fight out there for me. I feel myself. I, you know, I want to try the best. Out. I don't care if I want. I want to try. I want to try and really see how good I am. I want to try the best. Bring Lennox Lewis. You know, I really want to try. I want to try right now. I really feel good. I just want, if, I, if I lose, I lose. I just want to, if I did fail, which I doubt, I just want to see. I just want to see how I match with these guys. Because they're great. I have to respect that they're great. And I'm never on my game when I'm really fighting. Because I went through my little thing. But we're not going to use that for excuse. But I feel good now with Tommy and Jay. My, you know, I feel confidence with them. And I said, come on, let's bring it on. On, 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 up and up, let's bring it on. I'm not um, eloquent or distinguished. You won't allow me to ever be that, but um, let's bring it on. Fight time, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No, he's not gonna walk away. I wanna see him fight Lewis and bring those belts back home. 
I really do. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> Tyson is going to walk away like I'm going to turn down a piece of peach cobbler. If you believe that Mike Tyson will walk away from boxing, I've got a bridge I want to sell you. So, there is Mike and there is Tyson, the friend and the fighter. He is not an easy man to understand. He can be frightening, vulnerable, vicious, generous. When it is all over, who will survive? Will it be Mike or will it be Tyson? I'm not afraid of nobody or anything, you know, but Allah, you know what I mean? And I know I got my issues. I'm belligerent. I'm sometimes vicious and violent, but that's just because of what happened. Yo, anybody, look at my life. Look at me. I've been embarrassed, humiliation, degradation, and any other T-I-O-N you can name that's negative, right? But listen, and you're going to ask me why I'm angry, why I'm like this, and all of a sudden I look back in retrospect and say, oh man, I've been devastated. And the only thing you can say is that I'm paid, I'm rich, and my life and soul has been torn apart. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs>